morning. Welcome back, everybody. We're coming to you from the foot of Canal Street, which is just across, really, from the uh, police headquarters, where they've set up their command and control operations. And as the sun rises and we get into the morning, things get busier and busier. Uh, the, the forced mandatory evacuations have now been called for, and there's an estimation that somewhere between five and 10,000 people remain in the city. Some of them get to remain because they're working. We've seen workers cleaning up the streets. Uh, they are the exemption. They get to stay and they live in New Orleans. Some, though, are fighting it tooth and nail. That brings us right to Dan Simon. He's only a few blocks away from where I am in the middle of Canal Street. Dan, good morning. Good morning, Soledad. The two headlines today, rescue and resistance. Authorities are continuing to try to search for people, any possible survivors. At this point, they don't think there are too many left, but nonetheless, the search goes on. The second headline, resistance. It's just amazing. As you alluded, there are about somewhere between five and 10,000 people still left in the city. And the question is, is, how do you get these folks out of town? These people are so passionate. They don't want to leave and go to a shelter. They say they have enough food and water to sustain themselves. And so it's a tricky situation in terms of getting these people out of town. And at some point, it's going to have to get ugly, according to some folks. There have already been a few arrests. There was one example yesterday of an elderly woman. This is a frail woman, uh, really kind of a sad situation. She's obviously exhausted, and, and so are the uh, police, for that matter. But this is a woman who, uh, again, as I said, is frail. And she was pointing a weapon at the police, and that's why they had to take her down. But once again, Soledad, uh, a real challenge facing the city as they have to get these folks out of town. It's, it's, it's obviously not, not safe to be here because of, of the disease and so forth. And so those are the challenges uh, facing the city today. Well, Dan, you know, certainly we've seen people on our air talking about how they're armed and they're going to resist, but you have a number of people who are not armed and they're going to resist as well. And I guess there are lots of questions about how this mandatory evacuation order and, and forcible removal will actually play out. I mean, are they going to handcuff citizens and march them from their homes? Will, will they pull guns uh, on people in their own homes to get them to leave? Well, the police department has made it clear they definitely don't want to use force to get these folks out. But at a certain point, they may have to because of the defiant attitudes. Uh, I've spoke to one gentleman who says if the police enter his property, he will shoot them. And based upon his facial expression and his tone of voice, he seems serious. So it, it is going to be a very tough situation for the, for the police department. And the question is, is how patient are they going to be, Soledad? And when you think the police department, these are local people, and they understand, um, they understand how the people don't want to be removed from their homes, because they are the people who live in New Orleans. They probably don't want to be removed from their homes either, and certainly are you know, devastated in the wake of the destruction of their homes, too. All right, Dan Simon, thanks very much for that. Let's get right back to Miles. Boy, that picture, Soledad, of that officer tackling that elderly, frail yeah. woman is difficult to swallow this morning, I'll tell you that. It, it, it is. I mean, you know, but I got to tell you, Miles, it's going to come to that. And I, I think you're going to see more of that. That's a real indication of just how people do not and will not leave. And, you know, people here carry weapons and people are stockpiling weapons in their homes because they are not going to leave their homes. Wait till you start seeing pictures uh, of the actual way the, the removals are forced. I mean, I'm curious to know, will they put handcuffs on a little old lady and haul her out? Will they draw weapons? I mean, will a SWAT team go in to remove an 87-year-old uh, who doesn't want to leave her home? I think there are some, and how will they get there? I mean, a lot of these homes are still in water. A lot of questions remain, and I think we're going to see over the next several days and weeks uh, some really uh, sort of tough to take pictures like that one. Well, and the worst thing is it does take resources away from moving forward in the cleanup. All right, Soledad, thank you very much. The residents of San Antonio, Texas, have welcomed about 13,000 hurricanes.